Today's adventure begins by looking in this mirror. My mom is here. I am here. We are. I am kind of awake. It's early. It's about 8 a.m. We're going to be doing the Universal Studios Hollywood tour. Something you've never done before, Mom. Nope. First time. You've been to Universal Studios, but you've never done the tour. Right. We're going to get some... Look forward to it. I need some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little cup in the room, but I could definitely use some more. <laughs> I'm inviting you to join me and my mom. We do the Universal tour. Very early morning. 8.30 it begins. Going to get over there. Get into the little little area where they give you coffee, croissants, things like that. Wait for our guide and just see what the day brings us. I'm inviting you to join me, shall you? And as the recording of this, it is Saturday, September 23rd, 2023. So City Walk and Cinemas are open. Universal Studios Hollywood sold out. I know the HHN stuff has been selling out, but evidently it's so busy around these parts that even the studios are sold out. Good thing we got tickets. Pre-ticketed over. Sold out. Part of me kind of wonders if that's the sign that was on from last night during the event, and they possibly just left it on, but it doesn't say HHN. I'm not sure. Sure. All right, made it to the globe. Mom's giving a little bit of a wave there at the globe. You made it down. Now you can see down here what you see up in the room. Now the way that works, so the main entrance is over there. If you have a VIP ticket, you go over here to pass guest services and there's a little vestibule over there. Now vestibule is not the right word. There's a little podium and there'll be a team member over here that's checking your credentials. As you go in, you wait in the little section up top, the breakfast area, and then you wait for your tour to begin. All right, heading up the staircase now. We got our call time here for 8.30 a.m. Well, that's when our guide is gonna be meeting up here in the little group setting. Right over here is where we have the ET section talking about Spielberg and how he used to be here and how there was a letter here that he wrote to the studio and to, to he was denied work here. It is unlikely there will be any opportunities for summer employment on the lot. Yeah, so over here is where they have some of the snack stuff. They have cheddar cheese, black forest ham croissants, egg and cheese croissants, even some fruit. He even got some eggs over here in the corner and some yogurt as well, oatmeal. And down here, some cookies, ice water, a little raspberry lace danishes, and classic croissants as well. These are pretty good. I've had these before. And I think I might end up waiting for lunch because the lunch is pretty, pretty prominent. It's like a buffet style, but right over here is where they have the coffee, which is much needed. I definitely need a little coffee. I was out late last night at the LA Haunted Hayride. Didn't go sleep till like two. Got up at like six. And I also poured myself a little vitamin C, a little OJ. It's OJ is so good. I don't know if it's fresh squeezed, but dang, it's, it is really good OJ. They also have grapefruit and cranberry juice. How's the food so far? So far good. Grapefruit juice, I love that. You got the grapefruit? Yeah. I went with a little swig of OJ. And then you got the croissant here with the egg. Got a little photo here. A team member took of us in front of a little breakfast area table over there as well. There's mom and I with our lanyards that we get to keep as souvenirs. And there's a lot of complimentary waters that you can take with you as well. If you need to charge your phone, there's all the different outlets, different types of phone outlets over here that you can like juice the phone up and you can get stay hydrated on the go. And looking down upon the bust of the master of suspense himself, E. Hitchcock. I can't touch his nose like normal because I'm way up here, but Hitchcock from the side angle would be proud. Looks like I got a pretty full full tour. Probably about 15 people or so. 10 or 15 I'm guessing. Alright, heading down the escalator now. I'm gonna get on the trolley. Love it. We got some VIPs coming down the escalator. On to the trolley. Okay. Got our 3D glasses. We're gonna need these for Fast and the Furious and for King Kong. Yeah, right. They're gonna be on the trolley. 
so they're kind of like incorporated in, so nothing too extreme. So you're gonna need these to experience it. Hey, good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Yeah. All right. We still need some coffee. <laughs> well, sit back and relax on your beautiful VIP trolley for your studio tour portion. You need to know right away, and we will get it for you if we can. Uh, along the way on the tour, there'll be some sudden trolley movements, some loud noises, some fire effects, and some water effects. So just be mindful of your cameras and phones, but you guys can take as many pictures as you want. Station, not a set from a movie or TV show. These are real firefighters taking care of us here on the back lot. A little uh, closer look at them. Uh, but this is uh, where we can film a lot of big city scenes without having to go to the big city and dealing with people and traffic and all of that. <laughs> Uh, even TV shows like Game of Thrones and The Last of Us. Uh, those 3D screens are some of the biggest in the world. They're 40 feet tall and 180 feet long. We have the Magnum PI Ferrari, some vehicles from Back to the Future. We have Biff's car. We cleaned it off for you. And some of the flying cars from Back to the Future Part 2. Some of my favorite cars here are the Flintstone cars. I think they're so cute. Uh, they're actually just golf carts, and then they built a fiberglass shell and around one of them. several Ford Anglias used in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, one of the Fast and Furious vehicles we'll see more a little bit later on. And of course, some vehicles from the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies. If you saw Jurassic World 1 and 2, you'll remember that gyrosphere. Uh, did anyone see Jordan Peele's movie? Nope. Nope? Cool. Uh, so the Electronic Rise Tech Team Van, that's one of our newest picture cars from his movie. And we have a boat from his other horror movie, Us. And then a couple of vehicles. We are on. <laughs> we also, oh, you guys see some dinosaurs. <laughs> that's just dinosaur acid. Even better for you. So a rainstorm on a sunny day here in L.A., but we are universal. We like things bigger and better, so we need more water effects. So we're going to create a flash flood headed right down the hill. So all of that water just came from tanks up at the top of the hill. Good idea, Gina. This is the town from Jaws. But look, we caught the shark. Me and Wendy, this morning, we were here, bright and early, catching that shark just for you, so you are safe. Now, uh, sometimes filmmakers need to go a little further. They need to film an entire neighborhood. So, they will come here to Colonial Street, otherwise known as Anywhere USA. Because we can make the street look like anywhere in the United States we need it to be. Say you need Christmas in Michigan, like in the movie Why Him, starring Brian Cranston and Megan Mullally. You can pull all the leaves off of the trees, hire a business called Snow Business to come lay down a bunch of fake snow. Congratulations, you got Christmas in Michigan. Maybe you need a crisp fall through all the trees to change the colors and decorate the houses to look like it's Halloween time. Maybe you just need a generic suburban neighborhood. Many of you might recognize this from the Tom Hanks classic, The Verbs. Oh. Or you might even know this as Mysteria Lane from all eight seasons of Desperate Housewives. We got some Desperate Housewives fans. Great yeah. house. On the left, uh, you might know that as Lynette's home across the street from Mike Delfino's house, Free in the Blue, the yellow house is Susan, and the house straight ahead at the end of the street would be Gabby's home. For maybe our younger audiences, this yellow house, you might recognize that as Davy's house on Never Have I Ever in Sherman Oaks. And that lavender home right next to it, 1313 Mockingbird Lane, the Munsters Hall. Uh, you're you might have also seen this in the post credit scene of Cocaine Bear, located right next to a Decepticon. We have the mystery machine that was brought down from the park. In the back, we have the cream and black car. That is the Duesenberg from the 1999 classic, The Mummy, starring Academy Award winning actor Brendan Fraser. We then have a whole bunch of vehicles from the Fast and Furious franchise, many of which were most recently used. Didn't name it Fast 10 near seatbelts is a real missed opportunity. Telemarketing, I'm available. Now, I don't know about any of you, I'm still a little sleepy, maybe we should go back to bed. How about we take naps here at the Bates Motel? Which is always known for having 12 rooms, 12 vacancies. 
I would look out for the owner and former dates, however. I heard he's a he's a bit of a psycho. But he is quite the lady killer. However, the showers here are to die for. <laughs> That normal base was my type, but turns out too much of a of a mama's boy. Okay, I'll stop, I promise. <laughs> now, coming up here at the top of the hill, we do have the original Psycho House. We'd be going back to unload right now, and you'd be free to go about your day. But uh, we're VIPs, so we got some more things to see. So we're now heading back into the movie studio, and this is where the VIP part of our tour begins, because we're going to get off of the trolley, walk through some of these sets on foot. Now, on the way down, I do want to point out a couple of things we missed on the way up. For example, over here on your right, uh, this is our other residential neighborhood we call Elm Street. Uh, not of the nightmares. That's just a, it's just a very generic street name. Your own hometown probably has an Elm Street, right? But uh, this was used in the, Al in the uh, Will Smith movie, Hitchcock. He lived, Hancock, I always say the wrong one. He lived at the end of the street here. Um, this is where Paxton Hall Yoshida lives on Never Have I Ever. This was used in Desperate Housewives. George lived over there. Uh, that's where in season one, Lynette decides to teach her children about car etiquette. Uh, that's where uh, Danny's mom lives in um, the Mindy Project. That's her house in Long Island. Sorry, because this set visit was actually close to VIP for about three years due to COVID. We only got it back at the beginning of the summer. So we haven't had it back for very long. So we are going into a dressed soundstage. So this soundstage actually has sets in it. So you are allowed to take photos and videos while we go in there. We just ask, please don't touch anything. We want to leave it the way we found it, and uh, we want to keep going back. Uh, if you want to leave anything on board the trolley, you are free to do so. Diego will be staying with the vehicle, so your stuff is safe. All right, we're getting off of trolley now. We're going into stage 40, where they have an active set in here that we are allowed to take photos of and videos of. Also over here, the Edith Head section is the prop warehouse. I'm not sure if we're going to go in there, but... was used in the new quantum leap. wild walls, which means we can lift them if we need to. None of these sets are actually screwed into the ground. They're all suspended from above. So this is why we use these sound stages and film in here instead of going into a real house. Uh, we can get any angle that we want to. If you're filming inside of someone's actual house, your range of motion is only as far as the wall is going to. And we don't want to have to, like, if we need a wide shot, have a cameraman squished against a wall. We can lift up the wall and get a huge wide shot if we need to. Mm. That's why we have these wild walls. 
Now I'd also like to point out this absolutely terrifying contraption. Like look at the bottom of the ladder, follow it up. Give some credit to the people who work behind the scenes, y'all. There's someone who had to climb up this ladder here to like adjust a wire, adjust some lighting or something like that. So next time you're watching a movie, maybe pay attention to those credits. Notice all of those stairs. We don't need to build stairs. Your imagination fills in the rest when you see the term stairwell. But there's rarely stairs on a set, and when there are, they tend to lead to nowhere. If you have a show like Big Bang Theory, you know how they have walk and talks up the stair? It's just one set that they redecorate over and over and over again. So they'll start at the bottom, the actors work their way up, go to the second floor where they're going to be in a tiny corner. They might film that set of dialogue three, four, ten times. to our prop warehouse. And this is where productions get all of the props and all of the set decorations to decorate the sets. And then the other three floors are props. And we have about over 150,000 props here, not just inside, but like Gina mentioned, there's some all around uh, the back lot. First floor of the prop warehouse. Um, now there's a couple uh, rules here. Um, mainly, please do not take photos inside. They have asked no photos inside, and please also don't uh, tie to our next. Hello, goodbye. To our next off trolley excursion, we're going into our Metropolitan sets, which is most of our favorite sets here on the lot. It's a really cool one. And it is one of the most filmed locations, not even on the back lot, in the entire world. You have seen these sets so many times and not even realized it. So uh, while we head into our metro sets, of course, you are back to being free to take any sort of pictures and photos. And on the way in, look at this beautiful monster mural painted by artist Tristan Eaton. Tristan Eaton started off as a street artist doing not so legal sketches, but now he is a very highly sought after graffiti artist. His most recent work is on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Uh, he did a, a piece that was kind of an homage to a lot of those old Hollywood. Check it out. It's over by the Pantages Theater. Uh, it's like the valley's blocked off. Right. So we're going to hop on off here on our Brownstone Street. And you might recognize these sets from the movie Bruce Almighty starring Jim Carrey. I'm kind of hoping we go down and cross that corner and go into Hill Valley. I haven't walked around town square in a while. Actually, we are going to be. We just got dropped off. It looks like I am going to be visiting Hill Valley and Back to the Future because that's where he's going now. Uh, at Buffalo, New York, Shall you just at that fourth wall behind it. Um, so if you look inside the windows, you can see there's really nothing inside you. So we're mainly focused on just exterior shots. So we can have scenes like the News Almighty. So that scene inside his apartment, when he sees the dog come back to pee on the floor, that's inside the soundstage. And then we'll cut to a scene where Jim Carrey just goes action and we just open up the door like he just came out of his apartment. All of the brick and all the stone, not real brick and stone. Um, we use big fiberglass sheets to kind of press it together. And then the sheet, kind of mold it, whatever front you want. And then you paint it the color you want and then basically nail it onto the wall. And then if you want to change it, you can easily take it off. You can't do that on actual buildings. Um, but here you can basically have in this car and then all we got to do is turn the camera around and we're at a building downtown, not knowing that we're at the exact same location. And then later on, he's got to go walk his dog in the park. So we got a little mini park right over there. We only have to film what the camera needs to see. So you guys fill in, your, in the rest of your imagination of what is around, not realizing that you're in the same place. And again, it makes it easier and cheaper for filming, not having to take uh, your crew. Where Kevin McAllister gets lost in New York and Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. You guys remember he goes to his uncle's brownstone, but his, uh, the brownstone's getting renovated and his uncle's not home, and then he climbs up the air conditioning duct and then later on throws the bricks on top of the sticky bandit. So that was filmed right here. Some classic movies, The Sting with Robert Redford, one of our Oscar-winning pictures. Uh, Changeling with Angelina Jolie. Uh, if anyone ever watched The Mindy Project. Annie as well. Um, so again, it looks like a brownstone in New York. But anyone from New York or from New York, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of going on there. I'm uh, kind of wondering if we're going to cut through the alley. Now, the alley from Back to the Future 2 burned down, but this would be the same general direction of where kind of sort of was off to the side, even though it would have been more 
like right here. Oh, it's not real? I'm a little knocked. I gotta check this out, Doc. I'm excited, I'm excited. Yes. I don't wanna walk under the water though, it's bad. Oh my gosh, there it is. There's where Jaws was. Uh, Allie was used in The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield when he's kind of learning to crawl up the wall. Um, also, if you saw uh, Gone Girl, with Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike, there was a scene where they first meet and have their first kiss. It was like a sugar truck, um, and they were in this alleyway as well. So, and this now I have some fans in the back of this movie. Um, we call this area Courthouse Square. It looks like a typical small town, yes. but it is most recognized as uh, to our guests as a little fictional town of Hill Valley from the Back to the Future movie. So just kind of stick with me this way. Okay, so right over here is where the almanac was. This is all, this all burned, it was replaced. But this is where almanac was thrown in the trash. Diff comes out, gets, gets it out of the trash can right there. Now there's a dumpster here in this general area. Of course, this burned down as well. The diner on the corner where Marty met his dad, George McFly. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. Look at this. Best thing ever, literally. Skateboard chase through here. The DeLorean at the end goes down this road. Hits the conductor, hits the thing across here. Lightning strikes here. Goes down right here. and alternate 1985 and then 2015. So that was the street right there. Oh my gosh. So there's so much happened right here. Now it looks different if you remember the movie, the courthouse had fallen in front of it. It's still there. So like I mentioned, people rent this area out a lot. car chase around here. Goes along the edge here. Gosh, Marty up here, looking up at Doc. Goes around here, manure truck. Right about there. Also using the very first episode, Twilight Zone. a little different because obviously it was used for Ghost Whisperer but the poles are still in there. I don't think they're gonna let me in there but look at what time it is. excited every time I come back here. I've been back here in a couple of years. Cafe 80s. Just say no. It was right about here and then that dramatic scene with Doc and Marty. Everything will be fine. It would have been right about here. DeLorean coming down, getting up to 88. 
Because sound stage is there, you can't see Griffith Park anymore, but. Different tree, there was a tree there, but it's a different tree now. Because they just put this on top, so the actual pillars are still in there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See it right there? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the original facade of Back to the Future. There's the pillar. I can watch that movie out Oh. Never That's amazing. So that is the actual pillar. Yeah, I can just picture a car coming around here, chasing Marty. Stuntman falls down right here, drives off, turns the corner, and then manure. So happy we stopped back here. I've done a few of these tours over the years and it's been a long time since I've been back here. Probably because there's no productions going on, but even the last one I did, there was no productions so and they didn't bring us back here. So it's luck of the draw. When you do the tour, you just don't know what you're gonna get. You don't get to see everything. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works out. Love Hill Valley. I love Back to the Future. I kind of wish they put the facade back to how it was, but they did let me walk up to the steps. Couldn't go in, but I was able to see the pillar. In part two, one of the stunt ladies was actually injured when flew across the water and hit the pillar there. It was a, it was an injury. If you listen to the commentary on the movie, this was all not farmland as far as the eye could see, but water. It was futuristic. It looks a lot bigger on film than it really does, but this is the, the scope of it, and the shark still looks fake. Uh, and you're going to be seeing this a lot in the future too, so keep your eyes out. The new TED television series, this will be a school. Uh, they, I know Bel Air has a little bit of season two over here. So you never know. This is also used in another music video. I am a diehard Andy Samberg fan. Uh, specifically, I love Lonely Island. But you'll see their Never Stop Stopping movie ever again. Now, I do have one more fun little story. I like to They're going all the way back to the monster movie era, okay? So uh, there was a man who was pretty prolific during that time. His name was Jack Pierce. He was a makeup artist. He was responsible for the look behind Frankenstein's monster. If anyone has ever read the book, you would know the monster is never described in the book. That imagery we know today, that was created by Jack Pierce. Now he was also a huge fan of this brand new sport sweeping the nation called basketball. He loved basketball. So much so that he created a team here at Universal. And they were a pretty good team. They would face off against other movie studios, other leagues, and they were very good. They kept winning and winning and winning. So much so that they caught the attention of the United States Olympic teams. So they get a call from the Olympics and says, hey, do you want to be a part of Team USA for basketball in the 1936 Olympics in Berlin, Germany? And they said, absolutely, we would love to be a part of Team USA. So the Universal Basketball Team goes to the Olympics as a part wow. of the basketball. They kept winning and winning and winning. So much so that they helped win a gold medal at the Olympics in 1936. So no matter what any other movie studio tells you about how many awards they have, their Golden Globes, their Oscars, their Emmys, we are the only ones that can say we have a gold medal from the Olympics. If you started the day with Gina, please continue with Wendy. I'm just kidding, y'all can stay with me. You're all right. <laughs> uh, feel free to grab a bottle of water on your way out. This will be your last opportunity for complimentary water until our uh, meal, which is less than an hour from now, so not that much time. Also, oh, we've got Warner great. Brothers, Disney Studios, Disney Animation Studios, ABC, uh, Nickelodeon's out there, Cartoon Network, and they really are our friends. We're all working together here in Hollywood to create movie magic just for you. We utilize each other's resources. They film on our sets. We film on theirs. We borrow each other's props, costumes, actors. So it really is a team effort. The only place we're really competing here in Hollywood is in the box office. And the Emmys and the Golden Globes and the Oscars. <laughs> but all of that aside, we're working together to create movie magic just for you. So, it's the last moment and now leaving the trolley. Done with the trolley, now hitting some theme park. We're now heading over to Flight 
of the hippogriff. We're gonna go on this one. We're not gonna go on the other one. We're gonna definitely go on this one. Coming around the flight of the hippogriff. All right, so we just asked the guide. She said that we can go through the entire queue so mom can see the whole queue. But uh, since mom has some, doesn't like, you know, gets motion sickness a little bit on kind of extreme things and screen type rides. So she wants to see the queue. Okay, we're gonna go through and then before boarding, we're just gonna wait for the rest of the group outside. And you get to go in, up the staircase here and the staircase has all the moving, talking photos that they all talk to each other. One of the perks of coming through this one. All right, we are now making our way through Wizarding World and we are gonna go over to lunch. How to Wizard. All right, first dose of food here. I went with a little curry on rice. This is like some sort of mushroom rice dish here. I got some shrimp, got some mac and cheese, some veggies, some assorted things. Also comes with, a, with their compliments, a little wipe down, pretty moistened towel up, VI experience napkin, of course, silverware. All you care to enjoy. Very rarely do you hear places say all you can eat anymore. It just makes, it's more of a modern day term to say all you care to enjoy. What all did you get? Got a little bit of everything. I got, I got a little, not everything because there was so much to choose from, but I got a lot. Got salmon, shrimp scampi, asparagus, a little salad of some sort. I'm trying to figure out what this is. That was like a mushroom thing. Where? This right here, this rice. It's, it's rice of some sort and with the shrimp scampi and french fries and then little baked, I mean, uh, roasted potatoes. Yeah, we went on the tour down there. Saw the clock tower. Saw the clock tower. Yeah, there's gonna be lightning tonight. Tonight? <laughs> what time? Right. You'll just be there tonight. Oh, I gotta wait and see. Yeah. No, no spoilers? Yeah, we're going back to the future. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. I'll see you. It's good to see you. See you in the past or the you future. Mean. Where? Time travels possible. Well, they're pretty good. Great Scott. <laughs> yeah. She's a happy girl. What's your favorite thing on the menu, Doc, here? If you had, if you had to choose something, recommend. Oh boy, Great Scott. That's a tough one. It's a tough one, right? There's a lot to yeah, choose from. There's a lot of good stuff. Do you have time to eat? What? You have time to eat, right? I have to get back to the future. <laughs> Great Scott. All right, 1.21 gigawatts. Right? You know what a gigawatt is, don't you? Uh, of course you do. Uh, One million watts. Oh, okay. That's what it is? I never knew what that was. Oh, yeah. Uh, One million watts. Yeah. Maybe okay. 1.21. 1 1.21 million. Yeah. Great. So what time be... is it now? We got a bunch of... Scott, I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me at the clock tower. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Good to see you as always. Good to see, you. see you next time. All right, into Secret Life of Pets now. On to the dark ride. Ride time. Yeah, they're dipping the dog down in the, the, in the pot right there. And now heading into Jurassic Park. Mom's got her poncho on, and we're going to see some dinos. Here we go. That's going to do it for today. We decided not to go to Waterworld. Decided to go back to the hotel, relax a little bit, and enjoy. Oh, these fish are very, very friendly or definitely want a little snack. You got the turtles over here and the koi swimming around. But we're heading back to the hotel. Just kind of relax. It was a good time on the VIP tour. I'm really glad I got to go back to Hill Valley. We got to go front of the line for some stuff and enjoyed a good little breakfast, a little snacks at the beginning of the day, and a nice meal for lunch. The IKP experience. I've done it a handful of times, and every time I've gone to a different spot somewhere on the back lot. So every tour is a little bit different. It depends on the availability, what's being filmed back there, which right now there's not a whole heck of a lot, and the guide's discretion. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. The vlog is over.